Internet, Eric here. Well, I'm finally going to get back into the Wishmaster series. It's been a while since I've discussed part two on this channel. So let's get right into it. Today I am discussing Wishmaster 3. Can't really see with the glare. Beyond the Gates of Hell. There we go. Good enough. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, what have you, all that jazz. Um, this came out in 2001. Uh, basic plot of this is we're following a character played by A.J. Cook. Um, I mainly know her as um, the one who can see the premonitions in uh, Final Destination 2. But um, the heck is else she and my wife knows her from? Criminal Minds. She's a main character in the show Criminal Minds. Um, she is a college student who is plagued by guilt because of her parents' death in a car wreck. That plot goes nowhere. Um, but she, uh, her professor is played by, um, what the fuck is his name? Jason Connery, who is actually the son of Sean Connery. And um, she finds this little thing here. I don't remember where, how she does it. Inside is the jewel, the jewel that keeps the gin inside. Gin is freed. And, of course, she has to get three wishes granted. And then, of course, it causes the djinn to, you know, the race of the djinns to rule the earth. Blah, blah, blah. Just like in the other two previous movies. However, this one also deals with the archangel Michael, I believe he is. Um, and how he goes into the form of A.J. Cook's boyfriend. And there's sword fights and this and that. There we go. Um, if you remember my Wishmaster 2 uh, discussion... I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Um, I liked it more than I disliked it, I think. But there was a lot I did not like about that one. Wishmaster 3. A lot of people were telling me after 2 it gets really bad. I enjoyed this one. I'll tell you what. Um, first off, AJ Cook. She's okay. Um, I liked her in Final Destination 2. I like her in Criminal Minds. I like her better in those than in this. Um, but... She isn't given really a lot to do other than be the heroine and the damsel in distress and, you know, tough when she needs to be tough, scared when she needs to be scared, all that type of stuff. So, um, but she's fine in this. Um, Jason Connery, um, before his form is taken over by the djinn, he's just there. You know, he's this, uh, he's this professor who a lot of the girls say he has a thing for his students. Um, I don't remember if that's really true. There is a scene where um, A.J. Cook and him are working after hours, and that's how you know they, they study in whatever this little container is that has the, the gem inside it. Um, she thinks he's coming on to her. He acts surprised, this and that. Who knows? But after he is, his form is taken over by the djinn and he's in evil mode, I guess you would say, uh, Jason Connery, I really like him. He's a lot of fun. He's charismatic. He's suave. Um, not so intimidating as like Andrew Divoff is, but I think that's because Andrew Divoff literally looks like the devil and Jason Connery looks like Sean, a younger Sean Connery, I guess. Um, but he does fine. Um, the gin is played by a different actor and it's not actually uh, Jason Connery under the makeup. Whoever the actor is, um, I like him. The, the gin looks a little bit different. Its skin is more green. I think in close-ups it's more wet more more gooey um the shoulder blades are higher up um there is some charisma there, there is charisma to this actor under the makeup not saying andrew divoff didn't have any but i just like the way this guy plays it too he plays it kind of more smooth but menacing at times so whoever played the gin i really liked um the other character worth mentioning because the rest of them are just fodder for the gin is I guess AJ Cook's boyfriend. He he's not really anything special until he's possessed by the Archangel. And I like that because it gives him something to do other than being the you know, the boyfriend who has to protect his girl type of thing. Now when he becomes the Archangel, his voice is altered and he speaks more proper, I guess. Um, but it's just a really cool twist on the uh I don't want to say the mythology on Wishmaster, but, well, I guess so, because they do mention um, how the Arc, there is some history with this Archangel and the Jinn. I guess the Angels and the Jinns did fight each other when Heaven and Hell were fighting type of thing. So that was actually something cool and different. Um, the gore in this is pretty darn good, and a lot of it is pretty creative. 
Again, it has to deal with the djinn taking your wishes and twisting them around to his benefit. Um, two kills in particular, I think, that are really cool. Like, there's some cheesy ones. Like, one, one of the, the friends tells the djinn to blow him. And so he says, as you wish, you know, like, thing, you know, basically saying, like, blow me as in get fucked. But the djinn here blows him, like, and he flies across the room and gets impaled on some antlers or something. But that's just kind of meh. Here, there are two uh, two deaths that I really think are cool. Um, he's, I guess he's putting the moves on one girl, and she kind of likes the bad boys, you know, type of thing. She likes the heartbreakers. And uh, um, Jason uh, Connery says, would you like me to break your heart? And she says, yeah. Or do you wish me to break your heart? And she says, yeah, as you wish. You see a close-up of her heart, and it's beating so fast it, it explodes. That's a really cool effect. And um, there's not much budget here, but it goes into that effect, and it looks really cool. But I think the kill of the movie, or the death of the movie, is um, a girl, they're in a church, and it's AJ and boyfriend, and then some chick, I don't remember who she is, who cares, um, and the djinn in human form. And she wishes to lose weight, or something like that. And again, as you wish, and he twists the words around, she starts vomiting, and it's not just barf, it's, it's, it's bile and blood. So she's puking up everything inside her until her body shrivels. And she, it, the, the effects on this are disgusting, gross. Her body is shriveling up, blood coming everywhere, wet, moist, gooey. And the actress is doing a really good job showing pain under a lot of these prosthetics and being covered in slop. And AJ, uh, of course, wishes, you know... You know, what, what does the djinn say? You wish me to put her out of her misery or pain or take her pain away or something like that. AJ says uh, she agrees. And then, as you wish, she dies. So that's a really cool, again, twisting the words of your wish around. Um, they're in a church, like I said. So that's, well, that's the that's the kill, I think, of the movie. Um, we mentioned the, the archangel. I like how that happens. She knows about the history between the angels and the djinn's research, I guess. I don't remember. And she sees um, a stained glass window, and it's the archangel, or the archangel, I guess, I think it's Michael. I don't remember. Michael or Gabriel. I'm pretty sure it's Michael. Um, so she wishes that that would come down to stop the djinn. It's going to go into her body. Boyfriend steps in front, so the archangel is in front of him. And he's given, like, a full sword. You can't really see it because of the glare here, but he is swinging. There is some sword play. He tries to take out the djinn. With some sword play. So that is really cool. Um, I like how, the, like I said, the mythology of jinns versus angels is thrown in there. And we do get to see him use the sword. Um, there's also some good action in this movie. I really like there's There's a fucking ch car chase. Um, first off, I mentioned how A.J. Cook's uh, parents were killed in a car accident. Really good uh, crash sequence. Um, and we, uh, we have a second crash sequence here because... They're trying to escape the djinn, and um, he's in human form. And you see, uh, I keep I can't think, Jason Connery. You know, I want keep wanting to say his name, his dad's name, Sean. But Jason Connery, you know, human form. He's on top of the hood of the car as they're speeding down the highway, trying to shake him off. You know, and it's a really cool uh, action sequence. And then it's a really cool accident. They flip over, big crash. They get out, explosion, that's cool. And then they kind of fuck it up a little bit when you show the remnants of the body of the djinn in human form. And he's just laying there and his legs are bent at horribly comedic angles in this accident. Um, I couldn't help but laugh and you're not, I don't think you're not really supposed to laugh at that moment. So that did kind of take it out. And then of course, you know, they do the cartoonish when his legs are getting back together and his arms are getting back together type of stuff. So... That was kind of lame, and it also was lame following this really cool um, action sequence. Um, and then I, how they defeat the djinn is kind of disappointing. It does involve the sword getting impaled on him, and they fall off of a building, and like the, the falling effect looks fake. But then again, it was straight to video, and I think this was Trimark. Artisan Entertainment, but I think it was Trimark. Trimark, you know, the Leprechaun series. Pretty cheap shit. 
Um, also, it was filmed in Canada to make it extra cheap. Um, he just kind of lands there on the ground and he just kind of engulfs on fire and then just, and then everything's fine. So the ending is just kind of there, which is really disappointing because overall though, I really enjoyed Wishmaster 3 uh, Beyond the Gates of Hell. Um, like I said, a lot of people said I was going to like, I was going to dislike everything after 2. Really enjoyed this one. Could be because how disappointed I was in 2. I don't know. Um, but again, really like the uh, the look, the new look of the gin. I like the guy who plays the gin. Um, Jason Connery, once he becomes evil, is really good. Action sequence that, 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 that I really loved seeing him attached to the hood of that car. Um, it makes it a little bit of an action movie. The gore is really good. Uh, when Jason Connery is taken out um, initially, so the djinn can take his form, um, his wish is, I wish I can have the most, the two most beautiful women in the world with me. So they come, and then they're making out, and there's, you know, boobs hanging out, all that stuff, and then they just slice them to shreds. That's another cool effect, like, whoosh, across the chest. Across, ugh, across the chest. There you go. Chest. Fuck my life. Anyways, he gets killed in a cool way. Um, the heart explosion is cool. The girl losing weight scene is really cool. I like the addition of the archangel, archangel, I can't fucking talk. The archangel stuff, Michael. The sword play, a lot of that stuff overall overcompensates for the AJ Cook just being okay. Um, and then just kind of a lackluster ending. So I do recommend, I'll say recommend, <laughs> over part two, Wishmaster 3 beyond the gates of hell so that's it uh thank you for watching like and subscribe click the bell all that usual crap comment below tell me um if you've seen this one what you think is it as bad as everyone but me says um that's it i'll be talking about part four very very soon two bearded losers episode will be up by the time you watch this one it'll be a uh, leprechaun four in space comment below on that tell us what you think of that um that's it don't know how to end this one. i'm just gonna say cheers and careful what you wish for